Welcome to Peninsula Seniors Out and About. Today we're in San Pedro and we're going for a tour on fireboat number two. This is fireboat two uh, escorting the Lane Victory. Uh, the Lane Victory is one of the only ships or is the only ship that we escort in on a regular basis uh, during the summer months uh, when they take uh, uh, people out on tours uh, out to Catalina Island. Right here in this shot we're uh, flowing about 15,000 gallons of water, not even half of our capacity uh, off of uh, the stern of uh, boat two. Uh, we do it this way so that the operator still has visibility uh, on the way and we can see everything out in front of us and, and still put on a, a pretty good show off the stern. And every time Fireboat 2 does a display, it attracts uh, a lot of people. As you can see, uh, we get a, a lot of onlookers. We do water displays not only for the Lane Victory, but for uh, ships that are uh, on their maiden voyage or their first time in the Los Angeles uh, Harbor. And uh, we also do it for uh, some dignitaries and then we have some retirement dinners that we'll also do water displays for. We're here with fireboat pilot Derek Leduff. Can you tell us a little bit about what we have behind us here? Uh, sure, this is the Warner Lawrence, uh, or better known as fireboat number two. Uh, it, it's 105 feet long and it replaced uh, the Ralph J. Scott or old fireboat two a few years back. Um, it's a state-of-the-art uh, fireboat and the largest fireboat in the world. On board we have uh, 10 turrets, uh, large deck guns that can put out up to 38,000 gallons a minute. We could fill a swimming pool in a lot less than a minute. Um, all the water comes from the ocean and gets drafted into the boat and goes through a series of pumps. We have six pumps on board and four main engines that control the pumps and the drive units on fireboat two. It's uh, the, the gem of the harbor, and uh, if you'd like to come on board, we can show you a little bit more about it. I'm here with Jason Kelly. He's the engineer of fireboat number two. And what do we have here? Behind us, we have one of, of two of our drive units. They're V12 Detroit diesel engines. It puts out 1,770 horsepower. And is also, they drive our units, and they also drive one of our main pumps that, and it, that roughly put out 6,500 GPMs, I'm sorry. Here we have our two pump engines. They're v, uh, Detroit V8s. They put out 1,550 horsepower. They both drive two pumps, which put out 10,000 gallons, more than 10,000 gallons each. So you're talking about over 20,000 gallons when they're both online. Behind us, we have our foam room. We carry 6,000 gallons of foam. Okay, Derek, what do we have here? Well, this is a very unique propulsion system uh, used uh, with tugboats and uh, on our fireboat. It's called a cyclodial propulsion system. Um, it's not like your regular uh, propellers that you are used to seeing on a boat. What happens is uh, on the underside of the hull, there's two horizontally mounted rotors um, that have five shafts sticking vertically down in the water from each rotor, and then on those shafts, there's a blade, a very large blade, and they spin in a circle. They counter-rotate. There's one on the other side of the vessel that we can't see right now, but they counter-rotate, and then as soon as the operator, myself, the pilot, uh, makes a demand for thrust in the water, um, those blades turn in relation to the water, and they dig in, kind of like a surfer paddling a surfboard, and uh, that gives us uh, directional control. We can go sideways, uh, diagonally, forward, backwards, um, it's actually a very precise way to uh, operate the boat. Uh, we can hover in one position and it really doesn't matter how much wind and current that we're getting. Uh, we can stay in that position for uh, you know, as long a period of time as we want. So uh, it makes it uh, a lot easier as the operator to have this type of uh, propulsion system. Uh, it's more difficult to uh, drive a boat with a conventional propeller than it is to drive a boat with a cyclodial drive. Uh, Anyway, it's uh, very unique, and uh, I thought it'd be an interesting point to bring up about uh, Fireboat 2. Well, this Fireboat is amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, it is, uh, and uh, we're down in the engine room right now, and the engineers on this boat keep this vessel in pristine condition. Uh, just for a reference point, this is directly underneath the operator uh, at the forward station where the, we'll see it later, where the, uh, the operator takes control of the vessel. 
We're right underneath it right now. Okay, as you can see here, we have a model of Fireboat 2, and uh, if I could explain just a little bit further about the propulsion system, the cyclodial propulsion system that we talked about earlier. Uh, as you can see down here, uh, there are five vertically mounted blades um, that stick down into the water, and they turn in a circle and when the operator makes a demand on the wheel or the longitudinal sticks um, that turns those blades in relation to the water and that gives us our sideways thrust or fore and aft thrust or omnidirectional thrust is what they call it. We can go any direction that we want and it all has to do with these blades on the bottom of the hull. I'm here with Paul Hillary. He's the first mate of Fireboat Number 2. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, well, I'm in charge of deck operations, and I act as a liaison between the pilot house and my deck crew. I've got three firemen that I work with, and uh, besides emergency operations, we have daily maintenance on the boat, uh, all that's required with painting and chasing rust and all that. As far as emergency operations, probably our uh, most common call is a sinking boat. So if a boat's sinking, we will go and pump all the water out of that boat, and we have a number of ways to do that. We also respond to boat fires, uh, search and rescue operations, um, a number of duties throughout the harbor. Paul, how long have you been assigned to fireboat number two? I've been assigned to fireboat number two for the last 15 years. Originally on the Ralph J. Scott, uh, promoted in 92 to first mate, and uh, then the last few years here on the Warner Lawrence. Uh, I've got about 27 years on the fire department. Wow. Um, I started off as a search and rescue diver on Fireboat 1. I was in the process of studying for engineer and they came out with a list wanting uh, to make firefighters divers and I, I didn't have much awareness of what that entailed and looked into it and decided I want to give that a try. So once I came down here I said that's it, I'm staying in the harbor and I was a search and rescue diver for seven years and then like I said promoted in 92 to first mate. What we have here is this is part of our pump out system on the fire boat. It's built in line to the pumps on the boat and we can take these hard suctions and run them as far as 200 feet off the boat to pump out a sinking vessel. Uh, we also have here a couple of discharge gates that access our foam tanks. We have two 3,000 gallon foam tanks for petroleum fires and we can access those for hand lines here. What we have here is part of our manifold system on the fire boat. We have a total of 16 four inch gates and they're used to supply land companies with water as it was done in the Oakland earthquake. Um, a lot of the land companies needed water supply because their hydrant system was down. We can use these to supply many uh, engine companies with water. Hey, this is our crane. Uh, when fully deployed and extended, it's 61 feet above the water line. It's full articulating, can revolve in a 360 degrees. One of the operations that we use the crane for is to launch our skiff which we use as a dive search and rescue platform. We can operate a couple of divers off this. We also use it for uh, search and rescue operations, recovering people injured off the breakwater, a uh, number of applications for that. I'm standing below one of our three 3,500 GPM turrets. We can use these for extended reach on fires uh, and for protection of exposures. What we have here is a set of two of the four floats that we carry on Fireboat 2. We have also a set of four floats carried on Fireboat 4. If we have a wharf fire, our firefighter divers will deploy a set of these floats on either end of the hot flank of the fire. So they'll swim four of these floats underneath the wharf. They're then supplied either by a land company or one of our smaller fireboats. It'll create a water curtain underneath the wharf and stop the flank of the fire. Our large fireboats can then come in and with water sweep underneath to knock the fire down. At the end of that, when the bulk of the fire is knocked down, our rescue divers will swim in with smaller floats on hand lines and knock down any hot spots that we have under the wharf. What you have here is our largest of 10 turrets on the fireboat. It's rated 11,000 gallons, although in our pump test up north on Whidbey Island, we achieved 17,000 gallons a minute out of it. It had a reach of 600 feet. One of the niceties about the being able to reach that far uh, just as a conversation piece, we can put a stream over the Vincent Thomas Bridge, which is 185 feet high. I'm here with firefighter paramedic David Melafronte. Can you tell us what we have all here? Yes, um, we're in the multi-purpose room of the fireboat. The multi-purpose room serves a number of purposes. Uh, the main purpose is the 
uh, it's the EMS patient station. So if we have a critical patient, we'll bring him in here. We have a gurney. We have all the paramedic equipment. We have all the basic life support and advanced life support equipment. We also have a galley. It's the meeting place for the crew in case of a general alarm. And we have a computer workstation behind me uh, with a camera feed. So this room can also serve as a command center if we have an incident uh, outside the breakwater and needed to bring command personnel on board. But my job as a paramedic firefighter, and I'm also the backup diver on Fireboat 2, is to handle patient uh, triage, treatment, and transport. What we have here are a number of some of the key paramedic type equipment. Uh, this is our Life Pack 12. It allows me to, uh, or the firefighters, to monitor the underlying rhythm of the heart. Of course, this is what they would use in a hospital when they do an EKG, it's the same thing. If someone should be having a heart attack or an MI and they're in a, a particular rhythm, we can shock them with this unit to bring them out of that rhythm. In addition, we have uh, our drug box. So these are the typical drugs we might use on, for different types of emergencies. Uh, people that might be short of breath, uh, having chest pain, diabetic emergency, seizures. Uh, these medications allow us to you know, solve the problem as we transport them to the emergency room. Can you tell us, David, a little bit about how you got involved with Fireboat Number 2? As I mentioned, I'm a backup diver. One of the slots on this boat is for a, a backup diver that's basically, we have three dive teams here in, in, the, in the Port of Los Angeles, and we are in training. I've uh, been in training now for seven years, but uh, eventually I will be a frontline diver. So that allowed me, as I took the test, to get down here on the fireboat, and uh, then they, this boat became an assessment boat for a paramedic, which I was already a paramedic, and uh, now I'm able to hold both functions on the boat, uh, as well, of course, as a firefighter and deckhand. Those are my real functions, is to moor the boat and help out with the deck operations. What was the most challenging rescue you've done? I don't know about challenging, but one of the most interesting rescues was um, a diver lost on, on a 100-foot wreck outside the breakwater. And I was working as a frontline diver that day, and my partner and I had to go down and, and search the wreck. Unfortunately, we didn't find him. Uh, he was found the next day, but it really felt like we got to do something uh, productive and, and meaningful at an emergency call, even though we didn't find him. We're up here in the pilot house of Fireboat 2, and I'll just explain uh, uh, you know, what the controls do and, and how the, the vessel is operated. Uh, basically, um, this is the wheel that we use, and on a conventional twin screw vessel, uh, the wheel controls the rudder movement. Well, on this vessel, uh, there is no rudder. Um, and what the wheel does uh, on Fireboat 2 is what I explained earlier about those uh, five different paddles that are going around in a circle. When you move the wheel, that changes the relationship of that paddle to the water and creates thrust. This is for side-to-side -side movement, and our sticks here are for fore and aft movement. Anyway, that's a very basic uh, overview of how the vessel's steered. This is the cyclodial propulsion system that we talked about earlier. And as you could see, there's two blades that are showing, and, and there's ten blades total, five on each side of the boat. And these blades here spin uh, counterclockwise to each other in an outboard direction. And when you uh, make a demand um, in the pilot house on, on the wheel or the sticks that we saw earlier, that changes the relationship of those blades to the water and gives the boat thrust in any direction that you want. Um, diagonal, sideways, uh, fore and aft. So this is basically the heart of the drive system. We have state-of-the-art electronics. This is a, a Furuno Navnet system, a radar system. Uh, it's also a plotter. It tells us uh, where we are in the world so that I don't get lost. And it also has a sounder which tells us uh, how deep the water is underneath us. Um, this vessel drafts uh, 15 feet. It's got about 15 feet of uh, water underneath the hull. And uh, it's critical that I know the depth uh, that I'm operating in. I don't want to ground the boat. Some of the other things that we have on the vessel, um, these are all the controls for the uh, 10 turrets that we talked about earlier. Um, they're all joystick controlled. And uh, either myself 
uh, or the engineer who operates at the uh, engineer panel over here uh, is going to have control of the turrets and the direction of the water. I work side by side with the engineer who stands at his engineer panel and uh, to accomplish uh, any kind of goal that we need to accomplish from uh, uh, pumping out boats to uh, you know uh, allowing for large streams of water uh, to cool holes of ships or for large fires. Um, anyway, all of his controls are over there on that side and uh, my controls are over on this side and you'll often find the engineer and the pilot sitting right next to each other uh, to uh, accomplish a goal or a fire problem. Uh, there is another station uh, on the forward part of the vessel. It's exactly the same as this one. And um, depending on the situation, uh, I will operate from the stern station here, which gives me the, vest the best visibility of the crew who's down below uh, accomplishing whatever goal they need to accomplish. Or I can be on the forward station, which uh, uh, gives me a different type of view of our large turret that we talked about earlier. The, uh, the 18, uh, 17,000 GPM uh, bow turret, the one that flows 600 feet. Um, so uh, depending on the situation, it, it, that warrants uh, which side of the boat I drive. Derek, what can you tell us about the equipment you have here? Uh, this is uh, a set of turnouts right here, and uh, this is what we would wear into a, a vessel fire or a structure fire. Um, and this up here is a breathing apparatus, uh, which we wear on our backs inside of a, a fire so that we bring our own air into the fire with us. Um, and we even have radiation detection devices uh, that we wear on our person nowadays. So all the uh, latest, greatest uh, ways to protect ourselves we have in place right here. And uh, of course there is a, a, the same equipment for every member on board, all eight of us. The crew of Fireboat 2 takes such pride in this boat. Yes, we, we do take a lot of pride in our vessel. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's a place for everything and, and everything in its place. Um, you know, as you can see, all the fittings are, are, are nicely chromed. Uh, uh, the, the boat didn't show up this way. Uh, we, we pretty much made the shelves ourselves and then, uh, you know, kind of, came up with uh, out-of-pocket expense and had everything chromed so it, it does show the uh, the amount of pride that the crew has in the vessel and uh, you never know who's going to stop by. With Old Fireboat 2, the Ralph J. Scott, approaching 70 years of service, it was apparent that there was a need for a new fireboat. Engineer Moore, who was presently an engineer on that boat, saw the need and ran with it. After three or four years of research, he presented a package to Harbor Department, who accepted it, and then the LAFD accepted this project. A two-year building process was then um, started on Whidbey Island in Washington, and the Warner Lawrence was built. In January of 03, it was put in the water, and in March of 03, it was delivered to its present assignment at Fire Station 112. It was a four and a half day trip uh, down the coast, uh, 15 to 20 foot seas, but everybody prevailed and the boat was delivered on time. We're here with Bill Dahlquist, and we have the original fireboat number two behind us. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about the fireboat behind us? Well, uh, Fireboat 2 was launched back in 1925 and has lasted uh, with the LA Fire Department for 78 years. That's the longest serving piece of equipment that uh, we've ever had. It was renamed the Ralph J. Scott in 1965 after a fire chief who was a very progressive gentleman and was responsible for the building of the boat. Um, we're uh, uh, is this up on land as you see here now because we are uh, intending to make a museum piece out of the fireboat itself. Uh, I represent the LAFD uh, Historical Society. I'm a member of their board and I also am chairman of the fireboat uh, rehabilitation uh, program that we have and it is our intent to get this boat up to um, a museum class uh, artifact and with the support of the Port of Los Angeles and others, uh, we hope to make a very fine uh, example of this particular fireboat that has served all of these years. Bill, you served on the Ralph J. Scott, didn't you? Yes, I did. I was pilot on that fireboat for the last uh, 16 years of my career here in the harbor. Uh, it was a tremendous privilege to be assigned to that uh, beyond my wildest dreams and I told everybody that I would have done that job uh, for nothing and uh, kept that quiet of course. Um, it is a fabulous uh, piece of uh, marine uh, firefighting equipment, uh, 100 feet of vessel there 
with uh, nine engines, three propellers, six pumps, uh, five large monitors, uh, just a, a, a tremendous firefighting asset down here in the harbor area. Pumps 18,600 gallons of water a minute. I could have uh, filled a backyard swimming pool in about 60 seconds with that thing if we could have kept it in there. It really is a, a marvelous uh, uh, piece of engineering, well done, and named after, like I say, Ralph J. Scott for his hard work in developing it. Bill, can you tell us a little bit more about your endeavor to restore the fireboat behind us here? Well, we're, we're hoping to uh, have this uh, vessel saved for all time inside of a building. The only way you can really uh, save something of that uh, nature, to preserve all of those artifacts and things that are part of it. It's a very unique construction. The riveted hulls and the various things about it are, are disappearing from the earth. So um, we're on board with the port uh, to build a structure over this. And uh, as a committee, uh, we're going to be working at uh, uh, preserving the boat, uh, rehabilitating it, getting it ready for this condition. And of, of course, uh, this is a, uh, a thing that I would hope the public would be interested in and, and knowing about it and maybe want to, you know, in some way become part of it. I'm here with Frank Borden, and he's part of the Historical Society here. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Frank? Yes, our Historical Society uh, has many projects. We have two museums, one in Hollywood and one here in San Pedro, and they're both uh, in old fire stations, which is really a great thing for us to have. One of our major projects, besides the memorial that we're building in Hollywood for our fallen firefighters, is this great boat, which is a National Historic Landmark. And the project for us is to make sure it's preserved properly and uh, placed in a setting where people can come visit and, and learn about uh, the vessel itself and the people that worked on it. Bill's going to show us some of the historic pictures of the Ralph J. Scott. Yes, uh, Betty, I have quite a collection of uh, about five or six volumes of pictures of my whole career on the fire department. And uh, I took an early interest in Fireboat uh, 2. I was assigned there in 1954 for the first time. And uh, I really didn't know why I was saving all these things, but I realize now what a, what a great thing it is to have them all. It records the whole history of this fireboat right from launching day uh, to the, uh, 2003 when they hauled it out and beyond as we go ahead with our program to uh, save this fireboat. L.A. City Number 2 was launched October 20th, 1925. L.A. City Number 2 had its first major fire on... March 3rd, 1926, aboard the lumber schooner SS Sierra. A major war fire occurred December 28, 1967, at berth 174 in the port of Los Angeles. Fireboat 2 and Fireboat 4 are shown at attacking the war fire from each end. In 1960, the City of Los Angeles Fire Department started a program of fighting war fires using scuba firefighters in the water and hand lines furnished to them by either fireboats or land companies. They would swim underneath the wharf and attack the fire in areas that couldn't be approached by the fireboats. The fireboats would take the major steam out of the fire for an, a number of hours and then the scuba fighter, fighters would be in the water swimming back underneath and getting the pockets of fire out that couldn't be controlled by any other means. I did serve myself for 10 years as a scuba firefighter, and it was a very effective program that was accepted by many fire departments all around the country. In August 8, 1972, a major tank farm fire occurred at the Gatex Corporation in Outer Harbor. A number of highly volatile chemical tanks were on fire. About one hour into this fire, one of the tanks launched and traveled about 300 feet up in the air and landed back on a warehouse. Fireboat 2 is shown in the upper right-hand corner of the photograph, furnishing 17 hose lines, which were attached to foam apparatus from the airport to finally extinguish this very difficult fire. This photo shows the Gatex rocket tank on its way down after its explosion and launch about 200 to 300 feet up in the air. It almost knocked our helicopter out of the sky when it did so, and it did land within 50 feet of several firefighters who were operating heavy streams. 
December 17, 1976, the Port of Los Angeles was shaken by a major explosion in Outer Harbor. The 810-foot-long Liberian tank ship MV Sansanina blew up at its wharf at Borth 46. The entire center section of the ship was blown up in the air and landing on the wharf and crushing the buildings where various people were located. The entire fireboat fleet was involved in its extinguishment and it, the fire on the wharf and underground from broken pipelines continued for three days. I had been a pilot for just six months at this time and this was my first major incident of piloting the LA City Fireboat Number 2. From that time forward it all seemed easy and downhill. This fire shows Fireboat 2 at a major wharf fire in San Pedro. This was at berth 73, the SP slip. It involved six fishing boats, about 300 feet of wharf, and a number of piles of very expensive fish nets. As it turned out, this was the last fire that I operated Fireboat 2 as pilot. I retired as a fireboat pilot in 1992, uh, but I came back to the station on an event that they were going to have a water display, and they allowed me to take it out for my last water display with a fireboat. I can't begin to tell you the thrill of uh, using a boat like this with all these monitors going at once and the great uh, horsepower involved and the 18,600 gallons of water a minute shooting for these beautiful vessels when they come and go in the port of Los Angeles. It was traditional to do it on their first voyages, either in or out. I did many of them over the years, and this was the last one. Well, Bill, I want to thank you for sharing the history of the Ralph J. Scott. It's an amazing boat, and I really wish you the best with the fundraising. Well, thank you very much, Betty. Uh, it's a privilege uh, to have you uh, take an interest in our project, and uh, I know it's going to be helpful to us uh, in the future, and we welcome you back anytime. Thank you for watching Peninsula Seniors Out and About. I'm Betty Wheaton. I'll see you next time.